Okay, so here we go. This is a quick episode zero where uh, we're going to watch some lore. There's a, uh, as far as I understand, a recap, and then there's a um, what happened in between, minus spoilers. Minus uh, spoilers, very important Between there. KOTOR 1 and 2. I think if it's what I, I haven't looked at it, but if it's what I think it is, um, when they were on the, for the marketing material for SWOTOR, they were like, here's a recap if you didn't play games 1 and 2. And like, here's what's going on Got it. going into the into the MMO. Okay, well, uh, let's take a look, and I'm gonna play it now. <sighs> this and Mass Effect. Oh, was my, the, that was my the, that was my formative years. Rip, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> it's the good logo, though, right? It's yeah, the logo it you. Yeah, it is. Yep, this is definitely the Swotor stuff. As long as you can appreciate the good old logo, no problem. Mandalorian Wars. Revan and Malik did not fall to the dark side in a single moment. They turned after years spent in war and in defiance of the <sighs> Jedi Council. Yeah, that was yep. used. I remember. Yep. Revan and Malik's descent into darkness actually began with compassion. The compassion that compelled them to enter the Mandalorian Wars. Of all wars in Republic history, the war with the Mandalorians was the bloodiest due in large part to the Mandalorian's ambitious leader. You mean, they're huge dicks. Mandalore, the ultimate uh. sort to create the most powerful army in the galaxy. Oh god, we have extra notes here. Ma yeah, Mandalorians are a species, they're, 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 they're a creed. Yes. Calling together the Mandalorian clans and recruiting new warriors as neo-crusaders. Also good, Malak, that's cool. Mandalore began conquering unaligned right? worlds in the Outer Rim. The Mandalorians fought Republic allies on many fronts, but the Republic military wasn't fully mobilized until Taris was threatened. In the first series of battles, the hey. Republic proved victorious. Several heroes emerged, including the dedicated soldier and talented pilot, Lieutenant Karth Onasi. I mean, we just forget about him. The Republic's it's, defenders hadn't faced the true challenge. It's the little piece of hair. Mandalorian also, Mandalorian what a dick was not being a uniform. What a huge He's not soldier thing to do. I'm a cool guy. Shut up. Look at my dashing roguelike ways. Unleashing their full might, the Mandalorians devastated the Republic's defenses and began terrorizing systems from the Tingle Arm to the Mid Rim. The Jedi Council refused to be baited into the battle. What was that Yoda's name Despite again? Uh, Vandar? Despite brutal aggression, Vandar? the Council decreed that no Jedi should take part I'm in sure the someone fight. will correct me. As the war grew worse, however, a splinter group of rebels formed within the Order, determined to rally to the Republic's defense. The splinter group was led by Revan and Malak. Joining Onassis and the Revan. rest of the Republic's troops, Revan and Malak turned the war around. Revan led the Republic's forces in a powerful push to drive the Mandalorians from Republic space. In the final battle, Revan single-handedly slew Mandalorian. destroyed an entire planet and everyone on it. Revan's act destroyed the Mandalorian armies and ended the war, but sacrificed the lives of So this is Malachor. This is a thing that they got brought up once. Jedi in the process. This was the end of the war. With the war over, dutiful Republic soldiers like Karth and us. Remember when you? Remember when? You, remember when? <laughs> Karth, remember when Karth shot his Mandalorian shot <laughs> into deep space? Verda. Sure thing. Okay. No problem. Oh, solid hey. editing. You know what? Solid editing. This is. I enjoy this. Shit happened. Da, 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 da. Don't worry. Pay no attention. Forward, Revan and Malik to the dark side was complete. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Good job on that. All right. All right. Yep. Over the maps leading to the ancient Star Forge, constructed by the Rakata more than twenty-five centuries ago. I really should have brought the guitar for the musical interlude. 
<laughs> okay, that's the Star Forge doing what it does. Yeah, Star Forge being big, big baller, big massive factory. You know, I don't think I don't think Kotor two like showed it functioning in a. Both Revan and Malik grew quickly, though. Okay. As they drew closer to the Star Forge, the two Sith lords began to have visions of their own empire. Fortunately for the Republic, Malik's thirst for power drove him to betray his master. He attacked Revan's ship and left his fallen master. We saw that. Mm-hmm. The Jedi found Revan wounded and unconscious. Fun fact: she didn't have double blade in this debate, in this in this point. She had a single made a blade. Controversial decision uh -huh. to erase Revan's memory and retrain him as a Jedi. Heroes of the galaxy, brainwashing. Working Heroes with slash undoing what he decided. He then Control Z. The Republic yeah. and defeated his former apprentice. The Jedi Civil War was over. The Star Forge destroyed. Obviously, we did not get this ending. <laughs> ah, this is the good guy ending. Gotcha. The standard, the Even standard Revan's one. Lost memories, however, hid the knowledge of a lurking menace far greater. Some than stuff. I um. With the war over. Revan returned to deep space in search of the great evil. Yeah, the Star Forge. Just, just in case. What happened after that? Hit the button. <laughs> Wait. No, we're good. Okay, we're good. Okay. Hey, okay. okay. I couldn't remember how that went. I couldn't remember how that went. Okay. I much about the events that preceded his fall. The Mandalorian I, Wars will be the subject of my next report. Is that Kando talking? Uh, no, I think it's, it's, it's the character. it's the guy. It's the hey, guy. ad for the old hey, republic. Go, go play. play. You know what? It's <laughs> it's fine. It's not. It's no Kotor two, but it's fine. Um, I think that's the same voice actor who did the uh, the admiral in Mass Effect. Oh, he's the uh, the admiral yeah, in, yeah, in part yeah. three the, with the scar that you talked. Oh, about. Wait. I can't remember his name. Three, I don't know. Oh, well, he's, he's also in two. You hear him. You hear him. But he he gets a face at the end of the second game in a DLC and in the third game. Only played one. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That means the stage is set for you to play the best one, which is two. Um, and so uh, I was going to say the funny thing about the Star Forge is that I actually only hack it. That's his name. Yeah, I only recall like like I don't think we saw, we saw the inner workings of it by being inside of it, and we saw it turn on, but it still doesn't amount to anything besides magic. That's honestly one of my favorite things about Star Wars is that a lot of the technology they never explain. And I think that's fine because it's like a full fantasy thing. It really is. And the, it's, it's magic. The Star Forge is the most magic thing I've ever seen mm -hmm. in this in this setting. How how does uh, how does the Death Star blow up planets? Shut up, kyber crystals though. Yeah, like kyber cr Shut up. They it, just they just do. It works. Okay, magic. Got it. You concentrate enough energy in one place, you can direct it into a laser. If uh, I don't think it's in this lore, but I think the way how you get a red lightsaber is it's it's now the new canon because it's in the Darth Vader comics. Uh, comics. If you to get a red lightsaber, you have to torture and corrupt the kyber crystal yes, to make yes. it evil. Before in in this lore, I think it's just synthetic. It's just a synthetic version of the crystal. In one, you went into the caves where the red ones were. You had to choose which cave to go into. Uh, it was one cave, but yeah. Oh, oh, wait, but like, but like to choose the color, wasn't it by taking it from the, if the sla eggs? If you slash the egg and got one, you got a red one. If yeah. you, uh, if you just grab the crystals off the off the regular thing, you got the different colors. Instead. Right? Yeah, yeah. You could choose to get red. And so, old republic, old republic lore is it's synthesized. It and, changes that, and but in new new can like Disney canon, it's you have to corrupt it and destroy it and make it feel pain and suffering. And the reason why it's red is it bleeds. And I'm like, that's pretty metal, but I would have been fine with just synthetic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the 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 slashing of the eggs is not something every red saber has to do. Nope, then. <laughs> nope, it is not. It's it's I think it's just a synthetic version. It could be I don't know. There's probably some lore thing of like the Kinrath ate it and then it turned red and da da da. You have to get it out of that. Or yeah, whatever, but, uh, right, right, but uh, right. I, uh, I, I still think. Oh my god! Yeah. Squeeze blood from the stone. The reason why it's red is it's because it's it's bleeding, it's suffering and bleeding. <laughs> Dear God, which is metal, but also really stupid. Very very stupid. I love Star Wars, but that's really dumb. <sighs> and you see, because there's such a limited range of like presentable Sith in the all nine movies, mm -hmm. we end up not having a secondary color to associate with it, mm -hmm. whereas you have multiple good colors, but you've mm -hmm. got the one evil color. Yeah. Um, anyway. Anyways, we can get into that more as we get into it, but yeah. All right. 
And Good. Uh, there was one thing which I don't think you picked up on that was, could have been spoilery, but I think we're okay. That's pretty much like everything that happened and, and good for that. Oh, so. I'm not that observant. Good. Don't worry about it. Good. Because I know uh, before we jump into the actual like recording and stuff that there are at least a couple of people who are like, oh man, he's going to spoil stuff. No, I'm not. No, I'm <laughs> not. If I'm saying something and I'm winking, <laughs> it's for it's for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, lie to me. Oh, I will. Lie to me. Oh, don't worry. I will lie to you super hard. Do not worry. Just, you know, bring me untruths. I will. Uh, okay, so here we go. This is uh, The Bridge, I believe. Are we a React channel now? I mean, for for Bioware logos, sure. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is cool that they they uh, actually <laughs> yeah <laughs> awesome that they threw this kind of stuff into uh, Sotor. Um, although among past threats, I assume the public, that people wanted more than just a couple videos. Okay, this is hybrid. This is this is the history. first split. The historical factors that set the stage for the modern conflict bear close examination. I believe the greatest factor of all may have been the way the Republic concluded the Great Hyperspace War. So, the Great Hyperspace War is, I think, the first split of uh, Jedi. The In Great old Hyperspace canon. War old ca okay. began at a time when the Republic had enjoyed millennia of peace, growth, and consolidation. Oh, look at that. Coruscant. Mm -hmm. In contrast, the Sith Empire was ending its centuries-long adolescent period. Undiscovered by the Republic, the Sith had conquered all of the star systems near Korriban. They were now seeking new opportunities for expansion. That's the race. Yes, the At Sith race. Time, yeah. As opposed to the Sith brutal power culture. Okay. Out following the death of the Sith ruler. They look fucking cool. Among the They're pretty baller. The, <laughs> the chat is fuck. <laughs> Whether by chance or Space destiny, Egyptians. It was at this time that two Republic explorers stumbled onto Korriban. Naga Sadao sees this opportunity to gain political advantage. We've heard that name before. The He's one of the tombs on Korriban. Mm. Naga Sadao staged an attack to liberate the explorers. He left evidence suggesting the attack was a Republic military operation. Okay. Leveraging the widespread fear of an impending Republic invasion, Naga Sadao rallied the Sith to unite behind his cause. A preemptive strike against their newly discovered enemies. Basically, big wars. We like wars. Big wars. Preemptive yeah. strike. The war. The people embrace Naga Sadao as their new ruler. His first act was to launch a. I want to see. Yeah, I want to see what the spaceships from that era look like too. Yeah. The Sith armies attacked on several fronts, including Coruscant itself. Naga Sadao commanded all his forces from a meditation sphere. Suspended over a giant star. I read the wiki about the meditation sphere. Mm. Yes, I did read that. The initial onslaught that shit sounded the cool. Republic's unprepared defenses. The Sith Empire's victory was almost assured, but as happened so often, the dark side turned upon itself. That's kind of what it do. Mm -hmm. Naga Sadao was betrayed by his apprentice. Kind of what they the do. Apprentice was defeated. It's basically the a Tie Fighter. Did succeed in breaking Naga Sadao's battle meditation. The tide of the war turned. The Sith were lost without their leader's direction, and the Republic forces soon chased the invaders back to the very doorstep of Naga Sadao's meditation. Oh, look at those clucky ships! I love it. Recognizing his imminent defeat. The Sith Lord abandoned his forces and started a chain of events to destroy the nearby star and everything in its vicinity. You didn't win? Yeah. <laughs> Naga Sadao fled back to Korriban, only to discover renewed opposition to his rule. Civil war. It was, yeah, Ludo, Ludo Crash. Whittling a flat helmet looks dumb, though. Marco Ragnos was big boy. Marco Ragnos dies. Ludo Crash takes over. Naga Sadao's like, I hate you. Rebel against him. And that's what it was. Civil war. After. The big bad dies. Civil war happens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As the Republic fleet wiped up what remained of the Sith military. The helmet's so flat, bro. Fled again. Get a cooler helmet. Permanent exile on Yavin 4. It was at this moment the Republic made what my Yavin, Yavin 4, by the way, is a yes. is, uh, the, um, Sith no longer the movie the planet from Republic. the first uh, movie. Yeah. But the Supreme Chancellor was unsatisfied. 
Jedi and Republic forces were sent to Korriban and other Sith planets to ensure no remnants of the Sith Empire remained. Some type of purge, if you mm -hmm. will. We're the good guys. Mm -hmm. I wonder how things might have been if the Republic had handled the end of the great hyperspace. Space Romans. I actually kind of like that. Yeah, <laughs> I like that concept a lot. It's it's super fucked because they're they they literally got on a spaceship and flew, and okay. they're wearing X R Kun is pretty cool too. Had no relations with the true Sith and to another planet wearing that shit. But his fall to the dark side set the stage for the Mandalorian Wars and the eventual fall of Revan and Malak. As a young Jedi Knight, Exar Kun exhibited a strong connection to the Force. Through long practice, he achieved unparalleled prowess in lightsaber combat. Seeking to expand his knowledge as well, the young Jedi delved deeper into his studies of the Force and ignored his master's cautions, believing himself to be immune to the draw of the dark side. Don't learn too much, idiot. Don't learn too much. The Jedi Council grew concerned. Observing that Exar Kun's pull out of the wiki dive was starting to resemble a thirst for power. <laughs> From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. <laughs> Traveling to the Onderon system, Kun encountered the spirit of the. So, Kel Drummo is a name we've seen before. Yeah, okay. The spirit directed the young Jedi to where he might find the power. So, Force ghosts existed on the on the Sith side as well. Yes. No shit. The Sith and it's nothing new. Nope. Kun Fuck off! They try and explain it more in Clone Wars, which I kind of like, emerged, okay, whatever, I don't care. The point of <laughs> huh. Force ghost, done. His fall to the dark side was inevitable. To complete his indoctrination, Exar Kun journeyed to Yavin 4. There, like others who came before and after, he encountered the fearsome Masasi warriors, which? created by Naga Sadao. The Masasi captured Exar Kun and offered him as a sacrifice to an ancient Sith worm. Facing death, Kun fully embraced the dark side and channeled his hatred to kill the worm. Empowered, the young Sith Lord then enslaved the Masasi and recovered an ancient Sith. Yeah, creation. the Masasi are a Sith twisted, messed up version of the, of the Sith. Sith Jesus. Yep. However, ruling Yavin 4 was not enough. Seeking to establish himself as the undisputed Dark Lord of the Sith, Exar Kun attacked the craft cult of the Empress Tita system. Okay. Guess what? There's, there's other, other dark, the dark side, side groups, yeah. Face face. And here's I, Space Asia? <laughs> Looking at the armor? Could be. Keldroma. Oh, yeah, and this is, this is old Matt there, yep. Keldroma had fully embraced the dark side after unsuccessfully trying to infiltrate the craft and dismantle their cult from within. Is that a fan? After a long duel, Keldroma and Big-ass axe, big axe, axe fan, yeah. Exar Kun is the undisputed Dark Lord of the Sith. Keldroma as his apprentice. Oh, he takes him on. Okay. Their armies, Krath and Masasi, combined to form the infamous Brotherhood of the Sith. The Brotherhood then waged a ruthless war against the Republic and the Jedi. After winning several battles, the Sith attacked the Jedi Library on Osis. <gasps> First double-sided okay, lightsaber. I, I remember that. I remember reading that, but Get I didn't realize that, that it was here. pre pre um, Phantom Menace. Osis was That's wild. In the, battle. the Sith were victorious, but their triumph was short-lived. Remorseful for killing his brother. Keldroma abandoned the dark side and betrayed Exar Kun. The Republic drove Kun back to Yavin 4, where the Dark Lord enacted a ritual, sacrificing his armies to keep his spirit alive. Mm -hmm. Though unable to defeat him entirely, the Jedi were able to imprison Exar Kun's spirit in the temples on Yavin 4. Force, fuck you. From what we know, <laughs> <laughs> I lived, bitch. <laughs> I don't want to say too much. Of greatest interest is simply the fact that. 
yeah, no, that there's definitely some evil Sith magic that does some some force to, that does some serious overpowered bullshit. Yeah. Won't uh, won't go too much into it because uh, I don't want to force. I lived, bitch. Yeah, it's literally fine. force. I lived, bitch. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Interesting to see where uh, some of that some of that came from. And yeah, first love double eyes. You know, honestly, if everything cool that showed up in the movies post original trilogy came from an expanded universe thing first, I would not even remotely be surprised at this point because yeah. I'm watching it happen before my very eyes. Yeah, with uh, 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 the new trilogy, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, if uh, are we are we leaving this in for the for the for episode zero? Yeah. So this is all still there. I mean, but right before we wrap it up here, I was just gonna say. Um, I guess it's interesting because I'm like my brain is trying to figure out how we go from that Yavin four to the one that we saw. Uh, about several thousand years worth okay. of worth of worth of timeline. Because uh, if while we're recording this. Um, the High Republic just got announced, which yes. uh, which is uh, going to be a, a period of time of bo- so far of books and comics uh, right before um, about two hundred years before uh, the movies. They didn't they, they didn't give a number in it that was, video. It's, it's in the description. It's two hundred years uh, before okay, that, which okay. means I'm assuming they're going to probably be like, "Here is younger Yoda in his prime because he's nine hundred years old." And but he's alive. Then. My theory is they're like, "Okay, writers who are good at writing, and it's your job." Work together, make us new lore. Yeah, make write new characters, make cool stuff. Da 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 da. Be in the same room to yes. plan this out, and exactly. not all because, over the, the be, because uh, that's the, the non movie stuff in Star Wars is always better. Case in point, Kotor, um, and even with the new stuff like Clone Wars is really good. Um, Rebels is okay. Uh, the comics are great, etc. Um, but uh, like I feel like Phase One is writers write the stories for us, please. Um, and then phase two is uh, MCU it and adapt the comics and novels into MCU movies. MCU it, and then mm-hmm. and then that way you can already have the the, have the source material and go great. Pull 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 pull. And we've got yeah, and they they showed you all those books. Yeah, yeah. I saw that that what was it the light of the Jedi, and I'm yeah. just like, God, look at look at the artwork of fart smelling <laughs> <laughs> on the cover of this book. Yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, okay, okay. I feel I feel kind of caught up. Yep. Um, I didn't have time to ingest all those uh, extra panel of comic uh, stuff that was inserted into there, but for the most part, I think I got this going. Whatever this hand gesture means, yeah, I got a feel for that. There, the wars part happened in the Star Wars part. Wars keep happening. Yeah, that's the big thing. And I like it's funny because I like seeing what like someone who is Sith looks like when they're good, and someone who's a Jedi looks like when they're bad. Like, yeah, seeing how the character design can flow one way or the other mm-hmm. is always something I enjoy. Um, and we're going like going back to like Sigma being one of the good guys in Mega Man mm, X. Yeah, you know, you're always like, okay, but you look like such an evil giant dictator. How are you ever gonna? Oh, okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so right on, great. 